All right. Welcome back to the Competitive Edge podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Hickman, where fathers learn from fathers to sharpen their competitive edge as an athlete and in life. Uh, today's a little different. Just jumping in, I took a really long hiatus just moving. Um, if anyone knows me, I was used to travel across the country by 40-foot RV uh, with my family, my three girls, my dogs. And we ended up just settling in the Fort Myers area, then Jacksonville for about three to four years. We've been back in the house and now we're back into the RV and me trying to scramble, trying to find a place to find a podcast area. And this is actually a Spotify sponsored booth area. So I'm just trying it out. A lot of adversity jumping in here for the first time, but I uh, appreciate you guys listening to the episodes. So let's just dive right in. So this is a special episode with Mr. Force Bouge. And uh, he's a very well-known dad athlete in the OCR and DECA community. He has a dad of two, uh, he's a dad of two girls that are 15 and 13. He's 39-year-old uh, software engineer and lives in Montana. His biggest accomplishments as an athlete, uh, back when he was in high school and in college, he was three-time high school state champ and two-time college All-American. Uh, so that's pretty badass, man. And uh, in Spartan, which we all know, 10th place Spartan World Champs, very impressive. Third place Spartan Mountain Series, very impressive with all that elevation. And 16, uh, 16th place Spartan Elite Podium, oh, sorry, 16 Spartan Elite Podiums. Uh, and as we know right now, he's a top athlete in the DECA uh, community as well. So yeah, Forrest, thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Awesome. And uh, where where are you on the the standings right now? For did you do all three events already? Uh, for the strong. Um, so so I completed the strong uh back in I believe March, and um I think I was top ten at that time. I think I slipped down to eleventh. So they do take the top twenty to world champs. So I think I'm pretty safe, pretty safe. Yeah. yeah, I did a. Uh, I think I finished it in uh just over twelve minutes, like twelve oh five or so. So. For my size, you know, I'm happy with that. I'm not really yeah. very concentrating on the strong so much as the mile and the fit. Uh, I think that suits me more with the running, you know, me yeah. only weighing, me only weighing 143 pounds, you know, I'm I'm for sure probably the smallest guy in the top 20. So. Yeah, that's I me. Mean, that's, that's really impressive, man. Um, I mean, I've, I played ice hockey and there's nothing but oh, tall nice. guys that go to the yeah. next level. So <laughs> yeah. to, to not even know you, but see you in the deck of fit doing step overs, it was motivating. Cause I saw like a common ground, like, Hey, you know, you don't have to be tall to be great. Yeah. You know, we always got that. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I see another guy that's short, like we just look at each other and I'm like, yeah, we got this. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's who's awesome. who's going to be the best one today? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool, man. Um, yeah. Just, I appreciate you coming on the show. I know we had a little adversity jumping into here. Um, For sure. But it's, it's going to be a great, I mean, just looking at the show notes, you filling out, um, I, I love everything you put in there, man. I, at the end of the day, you're a family man. You made a change. Yeah. Yep. We'll talk about that. And you put all the energy into working out and, and training and racing uh, to become a better dad. So that's really great. So let's let's kind of share your story with the community. Um, before we jump in, what's uh, what would you say is your focus in order right now with, uh, with you know, triathlons, trail running, DECA, OCR in your priority list? What's first, second in your training process? Well, so this weekend I have a mile coming up here in town. The take a mile. And then on Sunday I have a triathlon. So I do like triathlons just because it's fun to switch it up a little bit, but for sure, my, my focus this year is the world champs, uh, the fit and the mile. Um, I've kind of, you know, I haven't raced a Spartan, um, a regular Spartan race since last year. Um, you know, since I kind of got rid of the pro team and stuff and things have changed, um, yeah. you know, with the three K course and stuff. I do want to revisit that at some point, but, um, you know, there's a lot happening and stuff. So I kind of have to prior prioritize what I'm doing and stuff. So world champs is my focus this year. Um, and then, you know, just kind of have fun with it. You know, I like to switch up my training and what I'm doing, you know, a lot just to kind of keep things, um, yeah. fun and exciting, you know? Cool. And, um, for, Deck of deck a mile and deck of fit. What are your numbers there? Where are you kind of standing? Uh, so last year I did the mile in I believe just over 
I believe the high 18s or low 19s. And so I actually qualified for the world champs last year when they took the top 10. I think I had the ninth fastest time in the world. But so I did have back surgery on my lower back last uh, July. Um, so that kind of set me back a little bit and I'm still working through problems there. But um, my yeah. goal for tomorrow, you know, I'd like to get in the 18s, um, low to mid, I think. Um, and then the fit, you know, so I went to one already in SoCal back in March and I've been, you know, I've been having problems like, like everyone else. I had a lower leg problem, uh, with a calf. So I've been kind of working through that, you know, um, trying to resolve that. So, um, as soon as I have that fixed and I can put in a good one month or so of training. Um, I'm going to fly back East or to Florida or somewhere, wherever. I think there's three fits left. So, so I got yeah. a few more choices. So that'll probably be in September or so. Cool. Yeah. I think Orlando, September 16th. Correct. Um, yeah. us Florida, us, us Florida people are, are marking the calendar. It is um, humid so down there. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, yeah. well, I mean, Especially, I mean, we all grew in OCR. I mean, yeah. it's it's super huge. I mean, it's dead heat. I mean, it's different. Yeah, <laughs> you're hoping that the morning dew doesn't mess up your race, and for sure, it's tough. Um, yeah. Just driving to the arena, dri driving to the venue in the dark, putting on your gear and your tight socks in the yeah. dark, and you know, if it's raining, it makes it even worse. You're wet before the race even starts. Yeah, um, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, but good times though. It's always it's yeah, kind of what what made us. Um, yeah, it's hybrids time now. This is the buzz for sure that's going yeah. on. Um, so what's uh, what's the motto that you live by right now? So say is a, a different question I've been asking in the front end is kind of like when when things get super hard, you know you're just pretty much out of gas. There's like two more stations left or half a race left or whatever that is, or you're trying to burpee one on one against someone. What what are you telling yourself in your mind to help you overcome what our body wants to do is say, Hey, slow down, stop. Yeah. I think, you know, the mind wants to quit at about like twenty percent or so. You know, like you can push it a lot harder than where what you think pink so when the mind wants to quit it's just what it's doing is it's just telling you hey let's slow down this is hard so once you push back and push past that you're you're capable of a lot more so so i just kind of resort back to like my wrestling days and stuff like once you wrestled at a high level like it makes a lot of other things seem not so hard you know because we would yeah. like like trying to even cut weight and stuff was hard yeah. like the the wrestling itself was tough but just the grind of practice and cutting weight and running on a treadmill at you know yeah 11 o'clock at night with with uh you know layers on trying to lose those last pounds and stuff like once you've completed that it makes a lot of other things seem not quite as hard so i just kind of resort back to my past and what i've done and just self-belief and confidence and um you know just yeah just make it work you know i agree I, i'd say exactly what you're saying it's just kind of utilizing the past adversity hurdles and yeah. just remembering that you've been here in this position before yeah. and yeah. that instantly gives you the the rocket fuel to kind of push you yeah, past sure. what your brain thinks you can do um yep. That's cool, man. And especially you're you're doing right now. I mean, I when I see you on the internet on on IG, I would I wouldn't think you had back surgery. I wouldn't think you yeah. had calf issues. You know, there's so much just in life. People don't know, you know, yeah. what people are really going through. We're all going through the grind and the grime <laughs> that's out there. Oh, for sure, man. It's tough. Like you know, and as we, you know, as we're we're older and stuff. There's very few days that we wake up and we feel really good, like really fresh. Like it's a grind to work yeah. out in the mornings and train. Like a lot of the times you got something that's hurting a little bit, you know, and you, you have to modify, you know, modify how you work out and train. But, you know, as long yeah. as you're consistent with it, you know, and you work through it, um, you can usually, you're usually okay. But yeah, yeah. it's tough. It's tough as you get older for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, so tell tell us a little bit about your your work life. What do you do for work? Obviously, you're you're working out like crazy, but tell us about uh, what you do for jobs. 
So I'm a computer guy. I'm a software. So I do the programming for for cabinet shops. So I do the CAD okay. stuff. I lay out the cabinets and the countertops and stuff. And I work mostly remote. So I basically sit in front of a computer most of the day. So Same. for me, yep. So for me to work out, like I have to work out prior to my job. It just, you know, it's a must do. Um, yeah. So usually, you know, I work out in the morning, um, usually at five o'clock or so when the kids are sleeping. Like that's another thing with parents and stuff like you have to find that time where the kids are sleeping where it's peaceful and you can have that time to yourself because um the afternoons are usually crazy you know with practice yeah. and stuff and then you got everything else so you have to find that time to train and it's usually uh really early in the morning yeah i mean as a, a fellow guy that sits at the desk all day um yeah you know, you, know, the, you got to keep the blood flow going. And it's such an yeah. amazing start, um, oh, I especially like yeah. if you can mix in like an ice bath after your workout, if you have time yeah. for it or a sauna, yeah. man, it's like it just totally just ignites your day. Um, yeah. But we got to keep moving. You have to stay busy because, it, you know, I, I, in my first episode, I talked about how I lost myself and traded my health and fitness for career and money. And waking mm, yeah. up early just to get to work early to be the first car in the parking lot. That was my competitive edge. And, yeah. you know, it's like, it's different. You know, it's a, you want to be able to fill your cup first and have fun, take care of your body, um, and then yeah. fill the cup for others. Um, for sure. And I've been doing something recently is, um, cause I've been listening to, I think 90% of the people that I've interviewed all wake up early and work out. So yeah. Um, I, what I've been doing to force myself to work out in the morning early is if I oversleep by a certain time, you don't get to work out. Like you, you have to wake off. up. Yeah, yeah. You have to wake up before your kids wake up. If they wake up when you're get, just got out the door, I'll go out. But if I'm getting dressed and taking my time, then it's like, then you call it, you call I, it. Off. I, yep. Yeah. That's and a good idea. It's like a self punishment thing. You know, it's, um, it's like in college when I was in grad school, I was, I wasn't the brightest, but I, I did it with hard work and flashcards. Yeah. And I would just, if I got an answer wrong, I would force myself to write that question out by hand um, nice. for like front page and second and the back page. It was like till my heart, hand fell asleep. <laughs> um, but eventually you get it through that um, self penalization, yeah. right? So, yep, exactly. Yeah, man. So uh, tell us about your kids. You don't have to share their names, but, you know, ages and do they play sports? Yep. So I got two girls, uh, 13 and 15. And then my girlfriend also has three girls, actually. So literally it is uh, me and a household full of girls. So um, I'm the only boy in the house. So I, it's good and bad. Uh, but teenagers, as you know, they are uh, they are a handful. They are a different breed, especially girls. So you learn a lot. Uh, patience is a big thing. Um, I'm still working on that for sure. But um, yeah, so it it is exciting and um, and a learning process with with the teenagers. Yep, and uh, I mean, I have I have three girls. So yep. okay, my, you both do. my <laughs> both my dogs are girls too. Um, so I'm the only guy. So like when I go to these races, it gives me that chance to just like. Yeah. Get the masculinity out, you yeah. know what I mean? Or yep, I go yep. to the gym, I I feel like an animal and then I come home, I'm like, Oh hey, sweetie, like <laughs> Yeah. Um, I feel that too. I'm yeah, the same way. So it, <laughs> I like it's, that. It's funny, I went to go visit my cousin in uh New York and I visited uh him and I he had a daughter and and he called me out. He was like, Hey, I really like uh your your dad voice. I was like, What are you talking about? He's yeah, just like, you're talking to my daughter and you're like, you changed oh. your voice and I she <laughs> yeah. really liked it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> just natural. You didn't um, even know you did it. Yeah. Didn't even know. <laughs> um, so, so what, what would you say as a dad, what are your biggest accomplishment as a father to your girls? Well, so I try to lead by not so much like what I say, because a lot of people can say things and then what you do is really 
what they see, you know? So I try to, you know, when they were younger, I tried to, I tried to include them quite a bit with working out. Um, and they did work out with me more when they were younger. Um, but now as they get older, they got other priorities and boys and all that stuff. So, but you know, you know, I just try to lead by example. And when I go to races, you know, I always try to make sure that they're welcome to come and, um, you know, you always want to make sure that they're welcome to come and pop in whenever they want. And I think as the older they get, they get to make that choice, you know, whether they want to be included or not. But, you know, yeah. you just show them that, um, you know, you put in the work with the, you know, and it's not so much the race that's exciting. Well, that's the exciting part. But the real, the the thing that they see is m- me waking up, you know, and putting in that work, you know, and, you know, and I do it every day. So you just try to show that you can, when you're consistent with stuff, you can accomplish whatever you set out, you know, in life, you know, so. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it is leading by example. That's essential. Um, Yeah. Involving the kids, something I think all of us dads are doing. Like I was just listening to the Mark Goddard uh, episode again on the way here. Um, awesome guy, uh, yeah. really great dad, great athlete. Mark's awesome. Yeah, yeah he's cool. Um, and then just focusing on consistency is 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 hard to do, and life is busy. There's so many angles. Like I'll go to sleep and have a plan for the day, but then it's like, hey, go to the grocery store. Hey, go it pick get, up this yeah. library. It gets hey. thrown out the window and you have to modify yeah. it, you know, and adjust it. Yep. Yeah. And there's that. some things you just got to say no and say like, mm-hmm. I try to keep this rule. Like if it's not decided that I'm doing it by 8 a.m., I'm not doing it till after 5 p.m. Gotcha. It's like this, yep. like it helps, but sometimes yeah. if it's like your, your wife or your girlfriend, like you got to go do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I saw on your show notes, you mentioned something about like not drinking anymore. Yeah. Yep. Tell us yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, for sure. Um, so I got sober, I quit drinking, uh, the day that I turned 30, um, as wrestlers, as growing up, we, we, we worked out and trained very hard, but we also partied very hard as well. And I was yeah. one of the guys that just would stay out all night and, and, you know, I took it too far, you know? So yeah. once college got over, I kind of lost that team like atmosphere and stuff. So I kind of realized that I was heading down the wrong road, you know, um, yeah. when you start hiding it and lying about it, then it's a problem. So yeah. Um, I, I went out the day before I turned 30, uh, went out very late, partied all night and I woke up the next day. Um, and I had turned 30 and I looked at myself in the mirror and I just said, you know, I don't want to spend my thirties like I did my twenties, you know, and I knew yeah. that I had to quit drinking. So I, I quit right then and there, you know, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, Nope, we're going to make a change. Yeah. Um, so I quit. Um, I didn't have a lot of help and support. Um, you know, I did through my family, but you know, I didn't say anything, you know, I didn't tell anybody. I just quit. Yeah. Um, and I knew right away that I had to fill that void with something. So whenever you quit something, that leaves a void in your life. So what yeah. I did was I resorted really? back to what I knew, you know, I, I started working out again. I started training. Um, and that led to my first Spartan race, um, which we just randomly signed up for and, um, we completed it. And I had no idea what I was doing or what I signed up for, but I felt that excitement again. I felt like, man, I want to compete again. I was like, I love that feeling. And so right away, Yeah. So right away, um, you know, I started lifting and running again and I didn't know how to run, like never, uh, ran track, never, never ran, you you know, at all. Like the only time that we would run as wrestlers would be late at night, trying to make weight, like at 11 o'clock at night, you know? And then also when we got in trouble or something, you know, as a team, so wrestling or running to me was, uh, punishment almost like it was not an enjoyable thing um you know and that's one of the things that i'm really you know excited for and thing that i switched over is because i've been able to run and compete with uh top runners you know basically you know like robert killian and cody moat you know and all those other guys like that you know and um 
coming from someone who's never ran before to be able to compete with those guys, you know, is a really big accomplishment. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so back to that though. Um, yeah. So I quit drinking, replaced it with running and training and working out. And I found a new, a new thing that, that I could, um, compete at and train for. And that basically started my whole transformation. That's cool. So you, a lot of people there, there, I mean, there's a lot of people that say like, there's family that are just like, Hey, you need to stop drinking or you, you found, you found the knot in the, the you know, in the hose and you figured yeah. out, Hey, you, this is not going to look good for the future. And you just, you stopped, yeah. which is pretty cool. That's a great story. So I, I saw that you mentor uh, some people out there to help them get sober. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I've helped two people get sober. I'm working on a third guy right now, an old friend of mine, actually from yeah. wrestling college. And he, he's had a few setbacks, but we are working on it, but you can't make someone change, but you can, you can talk to them and relate to them, but until they make that choice, like it's yeah. never going to happen. So, you know, you know, and you know, some people choose to take that route of like, um, go into that 10 step program or whatever it is. And yeah. that works for a lot of people, but a lot of people, they just need someone to relate to someone who they trust, someone who's familiar to them and, uh, they can relate to and yeah. you just talk to them and help them through it, you know, and it's exciting for me as well. You know, I like to help people. Um, but you know, there's a reason why, like, I think 90% of people who try to quit something, uh, they always resort back, you know, and it, yeah. because it's not easy, you know, and you have to make that choice. And, and there's going to be times, especially at first that you're going to, you're going to want to resort back, you know, and you just yeah. have to, you know, you just have to look ahead and think of the, think of the goal and remind yourself why you quit, you know, what's your why. So, yeah. And it's, it's comforting to, to, to see you say that and, and see you write that in your show notes and everything, just because yeah. like for me, I, I was always, I had the nickname of sober Dan in high school. So I wasn't oh, really? ever that, I was never that kid. Like I always like popped into a party and then I popped out, like I was gone, like by oh, like okay. 1130, 11 o'clock. Um, you know, I wasn't, it, it was weird. I was like, to the point that it became a joke. Like I just became sober Dan. So it's like, I had yeah. no reason to do it. And then I saw some of my friends like getting in trouble and driving oh, yeah. golf carts on, and stealing and crashing yeah. them and getting hurt and getting I've arrested, all, all crazy oh, yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. But then I get to college, 17 year old freshman, not, you're not even 18 yet. And I'm yeah. just drinking like a fish. Um, oh really? <laughs> yeah. So like, Throughout college, I drank a bunch. I partied a lot, but it it was never like a problem. It was more of like, like I I think it was more of like identity thing. So it's like, mm -hmm. like with the drinking, I felt like more myself and free, like you know, they, yeah. to say what I want and and all that. Yeah. But then like being so like cut dry, like in high school and to college, and just being that kid that you know you your parents and your family want you to be and all that pressure. So when you drank, it kind of just let the freedom out, like to do let whatever, which is, yep. which is a little crazy. There was a lot of crazy things. <laughs> um, and then I left college and my house became a party house. And I got used to throwing parties where people just got really, really drunk when they left. Like I would do all these card games and it was so irresponsible. Um, but the positive is I got all that craziness out of the way now. Cause yeah. um, I can't imagine trying to train for races and waking up on Sunday morning hungover. Oh, um, it would be impossible. You it, wouldn't it, be able yeah. to do it. I mean, it would, you got to make a choice at some point, you know, and we all yeah. go through that phase. Not, you know, a lot of us do where we're just kind of wild for a bit and some people can control that to a degree. And yeah. there's other people like me that couldn't, you know, and I knew I couldn't. And so that's why I quit. So it's cool, man. And I think, um, yeah. Where I drew the line was I went to the Dominican to my best friend's wedding and uh, ended up getting in a really bad argument with his best friend. And we almost fought. Like, and I was like, all right, <laughs> yeah. like, no, this is it. I'm done. <laughs> like, there's no way 
um, I'm doing this anymore. And it was funny because it, it just yeah. aligned with uh, my other friend's wife who was came with over every weekend to come drink. And she was announced that she was pregnant. And I was like, she's like, oh, I feel bad. I can't drink with you guys. And I was like, I, I won't drink with you for nine months if you want. So yeah. nine months turned into 10, 11 months turned into 12, and then a year, and then two years, and three years, and four oh, years. Nice. And I, I haven't drank. Good for you, man. Yeah, I haven't drank over like at least three and a half to four years now. Oh, wow. Um, okay, cool. So we can relate on that. Yeah, man. Um, so it's cool. I just feel like the mechanics of my body is better. I feel like I get better sleep. I feel I barely get sleep already, but I can't imagine <laughs> um, doing that. So it's good stuff, man. Uh, it's, 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 at the end of the day, it's poison. And it, and it also allows it you to do things outside of the norm. Like, there's one thing you should never do with business people for professional is to drink alcohol because yeah. um, I forget who it is. Um, there's a motivational speaker that says someone said, Hey, why aren't, you know, uh, why don't you come out for drinks after? And I was like, no way in hell. The only place I'm going to drink is at my house. So if I get in trouble at my house, I get in trouble at my house with my wife. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. That makes it, sense. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't be able to tell your people you barely know about your your personal stuff, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, no, I get it. And one of the things that I was kind of afraid of, like when I quit drinking was that I wouldn't have as much, like it wouldn't be as exciting and stuff. I wouldn't be as yeah. fun and stuff. Well, that's not true at all. Like, you know, I still go to the bars occasionally and I'll drink like a Red Bull or something and have tons of fun. Like yeah. I enjoy the heck out of it, you know, and I've been sober now for almost 10 years. So I think at First, once you quit, you want to avoid those places and be very selective of yeah. who you who you surround yourself with. But you know, now it's not even a thought to have a drink. You know, and I can head out to a bar. You know, I can go wherever I want. You know, and it doesn't even pass my mind to think, well, what if I just have one drink? You know, it's not even a thought. You know, and yeah. I have a great time still. You know, I love it. So. That's cool. See you singing karaoke yeah. out of nowhere. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, be like he looks drunk, but I'm not. You yeah, know? yeah, he's just having a good time, having fun, and I'm just being myself. Yeah, man. Um, so big question: How would you yeah. define competitive edge? What comes to mind when you think of that? A lot of it's mindset and habits. Uh, what you do, it's a lot of it is the small things and the small choices and the sacrifices that you make. You know, life. Your life will change when you make a lot of small sacrifices and a lot of small changes. You know, it's never just one huge thing. It's it's how you eat, how you sleep, how you talk, how you train, being consistent. Um, it's the small things with working out, you know, the 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 yoga and all the little things that aren't as fun, but you need to have those. And yeah, so, balance. It's, yeah. So competitive edge is just, yeah, it's a lot of it's mindset, working through problems, knowing that you're going to have setbacks and just working through it and trying to stay positive throughout it. And um, one thing that I found too, is you need to find a group of people who are similar to you. Find, find people who help you become and push you to, to a level that you want to, look for you know so a lot of times you know i've been working out with the same two with the same two or three guys for the last like seven years or so yeah. so find people who who help push you and help hold you accountable you know i think that's a huge thing because it's very hard to do it alone you know yeah. you can only go so far and only push so hard um some training is perfectly fine to work out alone running um, but a lot of the other things, you know, I found out that when I'm working with a small amount of people, like one person even, you know, mm -hmm. is enough just to help you stay accountable and, and, and help you push through those days when you don't want to work out. Cause there's a lot of them. Yeah, I agree. I, it's, um, I think I'm, I'm just you kind of making me think of my process. My journey has really been like by myself to get back in shape through calisthenics and then find OCR, work out with people. Um, but then kind of like when you start getting good, you start getting some frenemies, some people that are like, they're friends you with you, but those. they don't yeah. want you to do good. They compete against you too. Yeah. yeah, they want they want you there to push them, but they want to beat you and yeah. you want to beat them. And a little bit of that I think is good. 
Yeah, but you also get stuck in like accidentally sharing too much information. They're like, hey, yeah. man, so what like setting, what damper do you do that on? And like, how long does that take you? What's your PR? And you, like, you naturally <laughs> think like you'll just tell them and then you walk away like, yeah. crap, they're going to use that against me. <laughs> Shit. Darn it. One of the, <laughs> one of the things uh, that I've been doing for a long time now is we have a running group, a Wednesday night runners. And it's a group of a large amount of people. And a lot of them are high school runners and stuff, yeah. um, high school and college. So a lot of those a lot of those, a lot of, a lot of them push me pretty hard, you know? So we, we race all the time, you know, and I like to, um, you know, and they cycle through, you know, but, um, I think to have people that you compete against at least a little bit is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, as long as you don't take it too serious and yeah. get too caught up. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's, it's a, a, it's a healthy, healthy competition, but there, there's also mm-hmm. those, those guys that are, that fuel your fire that you want them to do better. They want you to do better. Um, yeah. and that, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, and then just to jump to this question, just in case, uh, I get kicked out of the studio earlier today. Yeah. Um, what, what advice, we'll just jump to this and we'll go to some other stuff just in case, but, um, what would you say to, the gentleman that's a dad out there who used to be in shape, um, but they're no longer in shape. They don't like being in their skin. They're not happy with what they see in the mirror, but they know they're looking at these old medals and trophies on the shelf that they used to be in shape, but then they had kids and kind of just put work first. What advice would you give those guys? Um, well, yeah, there's okay. Um, to those guys, well, you only have one life, right? So, Never regret the things you do, but those that you don't do, you know, and you can still be competitive and work out and train with kids and with a family. You just have to find your time to do it. You know, it can't come before family. So you kind of, you got to find time to do it. And just to, you have to remember that, you know, a lot of the choices that you probably made in your life that a lot of us, those choices where you take the, the road that's uh, simple, you know, and easy to travel down. A lot of those choices lead to a hard life at some point. So make, make, make the hard choices now and that'll pay off. You know, a lot of times you have to put in a lot of work before you see the results, but, um, you can either pay now or pay later, but we all pay, you know, so you might as well put in the work now and try to stay healthy and young and fit. Um, Cause if you don't, you know, it's just going to hurt worse. You know, I, the, one of the things that I don't want to do is when I'm old, you know, that I don't want to sit back and be like, man, I wish I would have tried this, you know, or attempted this, or, you know, I, you know, I don't want to have regrets. So that's why I do whatever I want as far as like competing and training. If something looks fun, I'll, um, I'll be like, all right, sign me up. Let's do it. So, you know, you have to take chances and a lot of times you're going to fail and you're going to have setbacks all the time in life. But as long as you just keep persistent and keep trying and modify things a little bit, you can, you can accomplish a lot more than what you think. I love that. That's a great message. You know, to add on top of that, you, you hit it uh, a couple of times there. It's just, I think the guys need to be patient. You know, I was leaving the gym today. Um, I got out of the cold plunge and I was just kind of put my shirt on. And, um, you know, the one guy next to me was talking to another guy and he was saying, he was talking about his, him struggling with his weight. He's like, I don't know. I'm like 205, 210. And I just can't keep going. I can't get lower than that. Like I really want my six pack back, but then looks at me as I put my shirt on yeah. in like disgust, you know, and, yeah. but, but he said, uh, he said, I guess maybe I'll have to get steroids to, yeah. and it's like, it's just this norm where all of us Americans want that, that easy button, like that magic yeah. pill. Like yeah. you got to work you, and you got to start small. You don't go to the gym and jo- join CrossFit. If you haven't worked out for five years, like you got to just, go to Planet fitness and just like take your time, go around the circuits yeah. and go slow um, and just work your way up and keep track of the weights that you're hitting and then go up five pounds next week, and slowly keep going yeah. up and up. Um, but it's tough, you know, cause I, what you said is staying consistent, knowing that 
it's going to take the work, but I'm not sure if everyone's willing to do the work. You're doing the work. Um, so I just wanted to make sure all the guys know that and taking the risk, you said taking the risk and falling forward is important. Yeah, it, you know, and it working out, running, training, lifting, it's all about consistency. You know, we can all work out hard for two or for like one week or so. But as soon as you hurt yourself or have a setback, a lot of us will, you'll just get, you know, you'll get sad and stuff and you'll yeah. just quit or something. And a lot of people in life, they don't want to put in the work, you know, and the way that I live my life is that I always strive, you know, I always try to try to look for ways to improve or to make things better, you know, and a lot of people, they, they get in a routine and they settle, yeah. you know, and when you settle, that becomes how you do one thing in life is how you do a lot of things. So, yeah. um, a lot of people just, you know, they get in a routine where they go to the same job, you know, they're at the same pay, they come home, they sit on the couch and they watch TV and that's, that's their life, you know, and it's not hard, but at some point it's going to be hard because they're going to look back at their life and be like, man, wow, I've just wasted the last part of my life and yeah. didn't accomplish anything and just kind of float, you know, they got by, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything exciting, you know, and that's not me at all. So, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I yeah. think I heard something recently you made me think of is there's a, I forget who it was. Um, Jim Rohn or maybe I forget, but it's, it, someone asked him, um, you know, how, how, why are you so successful? And he said, well, it's easy to be successful, but it's also easy to be unsuccessful because it's so, yeah. e it's, it's, it's hundred percent. Exactly. It's, it's so easy, but I, I think all of us can hit that 1205. All of us can hit the bubbles time. All of us can hit the Ryan Corning assault bike. It's just, <laughs> it, it's, it just takes the time and the effort yeah. uh, over time. Um, and I love the quote that you said earlier here in your show notes, but be the man you want your daughter to marry. And that yeah, is, sure. that, that hit me pretty good, man. Cause it, it's true. You know, the way you talk to your girlfriend, my wife, yeah. the way we talk to holding the doors for old ladies, yeah, stuff like that, open the door for your wife and your girlfriend. So, um, that goes a long way, man. So, uh, so fun. I like to go from the Emotional question. Now we're jumping to some fun, but you know, what, what okay. would you say is an animal that represents you, uh, based on your personality? Um, I like, well, my favorite two animals are a lion and cheetah cheetah, because I've always wanted to be really fast. You know, I move a lot, you know, I'm You're pretty fast, constantly, <laughs> you know, I'm constantly on the move and yeah, no, I am actually pretty fast. So I'd say a lion and a cheetah, um, yeah. are probably my two choices. Nice. Love that. Um, what big races you got coming up right now so for people to watch you? Uh, well, I'm doing the Tekka Mile here in town tomorrow, and then I got a triathlon the very next day. Um, but it, the next one will probably be a fit, probably that Florida one, and that'll be back, you know, in September or so. But cool. Um, my my main focus is the World Champs, and that's in Texas in December. So, yep, that's my main goal. Cool. Well, I'll see you definitely in Texas. I'm signing up for Orlando, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm always big on like signing up for something. Okay. And I'm like, I got to feel, I got to <laughs> feel it. I got to feel the energy. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. Um, it depends on how I'm kind of entering the DECA world a little late here. Um, kind of just, when did you start? Uh, when did you literally like three weeks ago, <laughs> Oh. Okay, uh, okay. but I've been you training hard for high rocks and I've been running yeah. hard since December um oh nice so i i've been taking the last three weeks decrease my mileage and just kind of enjoying yep. that moment of not high rock training um so I'm, I'm in high rock shape but the anaerobic like stuff it's starting to feel good i love it it's um I'm definitely better fitness than last year so we'll see what happens awesome man um yeah. but yeah man i i really had a lot of fun i could resonate with you a lot i hope to see you definitely in texas um maybe in orlando um I love what you're doing with helping dads become sober. That's so cool. If I could do something like that in the future, I'd like to as well. Um, yeah, man, just uh, good stuff. Any close, any closing remarks or advice for anyone that's listening? Um, you know, I do want to give a shout out to my dad. Uh, my dad has been my role model. Um, basically, 
my entire life, really, you know, he's always led by example, you know, he's always been involved in, in sports and karate and, and, you know, and he ran and stuff, you know, as a kid. And I think a lot of that kind of helped turn me into the person that I am now, you know, and now he's uh, 70 years old. He is doing the mile competition with me tomorrow. And he signed up for the race on Sunday as well. So he, wow. he's just, ice like, bath. Yeah, like he needs an ice bath after. Oh yeah. We're going to probably need <laughs> one. Time. But yeah. Just, just a shout out to my parents, you know, That's cool. they've, uh, they've been very supportive and loving and, uh, um, yeah. So just a shout out to my dad and he is 70 years old. So if he can do it, um, a lot of you other, a lot of you other guys, no excuses, man. Yeah, man. I love it. So all those guys listening to that, dust off your shoes, get out there, get that membership, sign up for that race about eight, 18 weeks from now or something and just kick it. Yep. So good times with go. Mr. Forrest Bouge. Thank you for coming on the show Forrest, And uh, we'll, I'll see you soon. All right, Dan. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, bud. Yeah, man. Catch you later. Thanks. All right, man. Bye. Bye.